Mm. Howdy, everyone. Angsty here. Uh, you may recognize me from such internet television programs such as the Plumes of Hazard, but we're not here on the Plumes today. Today we're here to talk about a particular piece of gear that I've been using lately. Um, this, on top of my Art Mod Evo, is a Haku Phenom. Uh, this little guy uh, has uh, has wiggled his way right into my regular rotation, and uh, and honestly, I thought it was good enough that I wanted to share it with a lot of you. Um, there are a couple different models. Uh, this is the Phenom. There's also the Cruiser, uh, which is very similar to this, but the deck configuration is a little bit different. We'll look at that in a little while. Um, but the uh, the the short of it is, uh, it's uh, it's an atomizer designed in Australia, which is cool because we don't see a whole lot of uh, things coming out of Australia, uh, vape gear wise. At least I don't, and. Uh, and the gentleman that makes it in Australia, or that uh, designed it in Australia, he's got a father-in-law in Korea uh, who has done all the machining and the actual physically making of the product, which I think is really pretty cool. I mean, if you've got somebody in the family that, uh, that you know does quality work, use family, man. Use family. That's great. I think it's really cool uh, instead of outsourcing it always or, uh, or buying, you know, million-dollar machines to try to do it yourself. Um, so that's really, really neat. You know if you watch the show, I've got kind of a high standard when it comes to drippers, especially squonking drippers. And while I still buy most of the ones that come out that might be good, uh, but they they're usually get kind of fallen off by the wayside. And this one is not. Uh, I've been using this thing regularly since it came in, uh, and have been thoroughly enjoying it. Um, so I mean, if you if you look at it, it's it's really nice and classy looking, and it's got a few things that I think bring to the table uh, that uh, a lot of other ones don't, uh, and it works really well in a few uh, a few ways specifically. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of go over all those things in a minute, but. Uh, uh, I realized when I was trying to kind of gather all my thoughts about this and, and kind of figure out what I'm going to say, I realized that there's a, a one particular thing that I wanted to talk about uh, that is related to this, but not specifically about this. So we're going to cut this first part a little bit short and uh, and kind of get into the meat of her and then come back and we'll talk about uh, all that other stuff at the end. So let's go on up tight and see what's going down. All right, here we go. So I want to give uh, Stephen, the gentleman that makes this, a little bit of props because the prototypes came in these cool little pill boxes, like this big hefty kind of sturdy lid. And if you get the, the cap only, it's this little tiny one. Um, so he went to the, the time and expense to find really cool packaging, but uh, due to some custom problems, apparently he was forced to use something else. But I did want to give him props for that because those things are really cool. Um, but if you buy the Haku Phenom, uh, you get, uh, or the Cruiser for that matter, you get a little package that looks like this uh, that works just fine. To, to, I told, I told Stephen because he was worried about it. I told him to not, not sweat this because who uses the box that something comes in? Okay, fine. If the if the uh, the, the skyline comes in a wooden box, I mean, that's cool now, but I'm never going to use that. It's just going to get tossed in the bait drawer somewhere, right? So who cares about the packaging? I don't. Uh, inside, you're going to find some spares. You know, O-rings, there's spare grub screws. There's two Allen wrenches, one for the 510 key on the bottom to switch out the top or the bottom flow pin, and, uh, and also one to go in the deck to adjust the grubs. So that's where it comes in. It works great. Uh, when you get your Phenom, it looks like this. There's my little Haku Phenom. I really think this thing looks nice. Uh, and the reason it looks nice is because it's simple. It's made out of high quality materials. It doesn't have dragons and shit crawled all over it, or its name emblazoned all over the place, or even logos and stuff. It's just it's just classy, uh, which I which I really like. This is this is how I prefer my atomizers to look personally. Um, we do get uh, so you get those tool lines, which I think look cool too, and it looks cool with the with this old school uh, Art Mod uh, Evo's like a uh, five ten cap. So that little riser there is part of the mod, and I think it kind of matches up with the rest of the atomizer, which is kind of cool. Uh, we do have a, a, t a drip tip that comes with it. Uh, so th these things are kind of funny. Like I basically never use the stock stock drip tips that come with it, but there's a lot of atomizers that only look good with certain drip tips, so it's always nice when they include one that does look nice. So, yeah, that does look nice? Yes, it does, but um, you know I'm going to be putting an Omen post out tip in it, which is how I've been running uh, this setup uh, so far. So, there you go. Plus, uh, notice that we have a nice flat top cap, which looks good with all drip tips, including the one that you happen to like. Uh, they all go on there really nice, and, uh, and they look good. So, let's look at the deck. So, uh, based on uh, some feedback by myself and Mark Todd and a couple other people, I'm sure, uh, Steven actually went and changed the prototype and made a whole new model and called it the Phenom or Phenom uh, just for us, uh, which is very kind of, <laughs> kind of crazy, actually. But uh, what he did is he kind of took up some of the space in the deck and made a nice little channel across the side, and he adjusted the airflow so that now that it works, it works uh, optimally like the other thing, uh, like the other model, uh, for this reduced uh, deck style, which is 
crazy. I've, I've never known somebody to just release a whole new product just for some feedback. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, I think that, I thought that was really cool. Uh, there's your post. You can see this is uh, our negative side. You can see it's just a slot. Let's, uh, let's come up a little tighter here so we can see so we can see uh, exactly what this looks like here. So you can see with just a slot there. A little grub screw coming down and on the other side, the positive side, we have a nice wide hole uh, with a grub screw, you know, gold bladed grub screws on top. So there we go. Now you can see that we have two nice big air, uh, air posts and you can see we've got an angle straight down on this side and angle down into the coil on get some light in there so down this side you can see the coil I'm running there I'm, I, I'm testing a, uh, a non round wire build I've got my one of my thin Clapton's in here uh, this uh, this is a single core 27 gauge is that right yeah I think so and then like a 34 wrap like a 34 wrap um, and uh, and this works great now one thing I have to diverge from my dear friend Todd the gap between uh, between this side and this side where your coil sits uh, it's exactly the same as as one of our other favorite atomizers. It's like 9.5 versus 9.2 millimeters across. It's basically the same thing. This, uh, there's plenty of room, but not too much room to me for either round wire or fancier try hard builds like this. Um, now you can see quilt positioning wise, uh, obviously the, the mounting of this thing is easy as pie, right? You slide your positive in, your negative can kind of slip in from the side and you just tighten down these grubs. These grubs are super, super, uh, they're rounded off and I haven't had any problem gripping uh, round, even thin wire, like 27 gauge or thicker wire, uh, no shearing, uh, none of that sort of stuff. I was actually concerned, uh, just so you know, about the, uh, the negative terminal. So uh, this style clamp, I have seen this in, in less, you know, less nice atomizers, I guess. Uh, as you screw this down, right, as you're torquing from here, uh, screwing down this whole that whole block can be pushed up right and end up deforming and ruining your atomizer um, I was actually concerned about that and that was completely unfounded the uh, the 316 that this thing is made out of is totally sturdy there's plenty of meat left uh, here in this in this joint to take uh, a lot of abuse I feel like this is very sturdy and, and easily to uh, easy to build on without worrying about you're gonna break your addy so that works really well to slide in now you will notice also that uh, I went out of focus. Sorry. Uh, that we've got a. Um, I've got my coil up, legs down. That sounds like a song. Coil up, legs down. Anyway, uh, and the reason I do that uh, in a lot of atomizers, at least the ones that are appropriate, is I can then uh, drape down my wicks, and it's sitting on these, uh, you know, the legs that are coming off your coil to go into your posts. Uh, if there's any, you know, chance at a at a hot spot or something, that will take care of because you'll have saturated wicks laying across there. Uh, I find this works really well. It'd probably work just fine the other way around. Man, um, you can see on the air hole here, we also got a little bit of room off to the side and that is so your airflow adjustment can work properly. So when you, drop your, when you drop your cap on, if you just keep turning it, you can shut this down. Now, one of the things that's really nice about this Addy is the fact that you can do that and it's not very loud. If it's wide open like this, smooth as silk. If you close it down a little bit, let's close it down half. How about that? It changes the tone of the whoosh a little bit, but it does not make a lot of noise. I really like that. I think that's really nice for those of us that don't like wide open stuff. Now, that said, this thing is a little bit a little bit more air than I like wide open, maybe a hair, but I can turn it down a little bit, and that's great. And it still works fabulously. Um, now, as far as coil position, you'll see that I'm kind of low. I'm actually a little bit below the deck lip there. And the reason is, is we were just looking down the airflow channels a minute ago. I do that so that you can see the bottom of the coil from both sides. And I feel like that that is the way to, to do it. There you go, like that. Uh, I feel like that that's the way to do it for the optimal flavor, personally. That's just the way I like to build. So let's bung some wick in this thing and uh, give it a whack. All right, so one of the things I like about the uh, Haku Phenom uh, and Cruiser is it doesn't take much cotton. So if you're using uh, good cotton, like, uh, like Shadow, which I prefer to use, and I cut off one of my normal strips, I can actually just cut that again in half and just use that one little strip, you know, you know, squat up one end and then thread it through and just lop off, lop off that end that you bought it up and that's what you're left with. I usually leave about a millimeter or two off of either side and, uh, and just grab it and tuck it down in. That's about it. Now, uh, now that we've got this thing wicked, I do, uh, you know, we'll just kind of poke around, make sure we're not too tight, make sure we're not interfering with our uh, squonk hole there in the middle. 
And I, will, I want to tell you that one of the things I really like about this Addy, which is the same in uh, in my other favorite atomizer, is as you are uh, as you're squonking and using uh, a squonker, this thing the way well a it sucks down most of the juice back down in the hole anyway, so it doesn't leave much on the deck, which is nice. Um, but the other thing is even if you over squonk it like crazy, like I mean weird like underwater right? It's crazy. It it'll pull it all back down, which is nice. And then if you set it on its side, it's just it's not going to leak. Because of those angled airflow holes, uh, once your cotton is saturated, obviously it's a little weird here, but even though it still didn't leak, um, once, your, once your cotton's saturated, when it pulls all the liquid back down and it gets in your cotton, but it pulls the excess away, and the fact that this the airflow is, uh, is angled like it is, and the fact that there's room on the deck and above these guys here for the juice to go, the odds are it's not going to leak on you ever. Uh, I haven't had a problem with this at all, and that's one of the things that I really like about this, and I think makes a really good squonking atomizer. That that's one of my key that's one of my key features that I look for personally. Um, so as we're sitting here warming up our our e liquid, oh, let's go crazy. We'll just go crazy. Coils underwater, and it's still just gonna suck it all back down. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Works like champ. Uh, this thing's about ready to vape. I'm gonna go well. I'm gonna go vape it. Let's go back up top and uh, and do some do, do some little chatting, do some pros and cons. What do you say? That's what I want to do. Let's go. Oh man, I almost forgot. Uh, I did want to show you the difference between the Haku Phenom or Phenom and the Cruiser. So this is the other model uh, that uh, that is out there. Now this is the prototype. This is the original one that was sent to me, and then uh, then Stephen went and made the Phenom here. But this is what turned into the Cruiser, and this is what turned into the Phenom. So this guy is basically what you're going to get for the Cruiser. Obviously, the one thing, this is the, the prototype. So the airflow, the little airflow lip is gone. Uh, or not gone, but it hasn't hadn't been added yet. But the, you can get an idea of the deck. So the Cruiser uh, looks like this. Uh, it works really well. Now, you've got uh, some extra room in the deck for more wick. You've got some extra room in the deck for, um, for more coils. Now, this one has plenty of room for just about whatever you want to throw at it. But if you're after uh, specifically dual coiling, um, I can see how this might be a little bit more useful because you'll have two full uh, coils worth of cotton on either side. So you'll have enough room to do that. Uh, you know, I think that would be useful. Uh, if you're if you're running like some four millimeter crazy thick ass, you know, doubled stapled backwards, whatever helix try hard coil, uh, maybe you might need this too, especially if you're running over three millimeters. Sure, you've got, now you've got some extra room for your wick. Um, but besides that, same posts, same quality everywhere else. Uh, everything else is basically the same. You just basically have some room here on the side. Uh, now, are there some tweaks and stuff to the Phenom, uh, the Phenom to make it work properly? Yes, there is. And so is, are the two things, are there a little bit subtle differences? Yes, but basically the difference is this. Basically the difference is there. That's it. Okay, sorry for interrupting. Let's go. So tasty. You can see those clouds. I've got a fan on and I'm at 29 watts. Uh, the, the airflow on here is just so good for a really satisfying thick vape. Um, so let's do some pros and cons real quick and then a quick note at the end uh, that's kind of, it's related but it's not about the Haku specifically, but I think it's relevant. Let's go. So pros, obviously it squonks. I've got it on squonk mod right now because that's how you know that's how you're supposed to vape because it works really well. Uh, you don't have to track down a bottom feeding pen. Uh, you know it comes with it straight in the box, which is nice. No no extra purchases and chasing down lists and whatever for a, a screw, basically. So it's that's annoying. Um, the the deck and the cap the the quality machining is solid. Uh, the deck is super easy to build on. Um, it, I mean, your coil just drops right in there and you screw down your grubs. The grubs are very secure. I've had no problems with wire shear or anything like that with even thin 27 gauge wire or uh, and no problem with getting Clapton's through there uh, for tightening down. It worked great. Uh, I see no problem. If I don't have any, I haven't made any aliens or anything crazy in a long time, but I would, I have no doubt that it would go right through uh, the positive hole in that thing. And, and be very secure. The flavor, you know, you know, if you know me, you know, on the show, I'm really picky about the flavor stuff, uh, especially with my particular squonking ADVs. Uh, it, it just needs to be right. Uh, and I would put this up with the very best. Really would. It, the, the flavor is solid. The vapor is very thick. Uh, I think maybe in the future, some uh, additional accessories could be released. Maybe a top cap with a, with a slightly different shape. Uh, on the inside, 
maybe might make it even better. But even as it stands right now, this is amongst my favorite atomizers. I have been using this thing constantly uh, since I got the, uh, since, especially since I got the, re the retail version. The, uh, the prototype, since it didn't have the, the extra uh, airflow side, it was a little bit too much air for me, uh, which hindered my ability to really enjoy it. Uh, but all the retail ones obviously have that full uh, full AFC and it works great. Um, the, the airflow is very, speaking of the airflow, it's super, super smooth. I love the fact that I can go from wide open and it's nice and quiet and then I can turn it down, you know, half and it's still super smooth. There's no buffeting. There's no like crazy turbulent air draw in the draw. It's all just it, does it change the, the tone, so to speak, of the whoosh? Yeah, it does a little bit. Of course it does. You, you have the less air, and you're still pulling a similar sort of force through it. But it's still super smooth, and it's not very loud, which is awesome. <clears throat> um, I haven't had any whistling or anything except for once. Uh, normally it's been fine, but I did find one time it started whistling, which is really weird. And then I, So I took cap it up, and I looked a little closer, and my coil had been uh, moved around. Um, it was not sitting in the middle and kind of, kind of down the way I normally run it. Uh, I put that back where it goes, and it's it's been fine ever since. So just so you know, that's that is how you fix that. That's how you fix it on the Narda too. Uh, if your if your atomizer whistles, you're probably built it wrong, or it's moved around a little bit. And that happens even with vaping. I've found uh, just by using a build, sometimes it you know it deforms itself a little bit. Just put it back. Works great. Um, the other thing is that since it's a squonking atomizer, uh, one of the big things that I find useful is uh, something being relatively leak resistant. Um, and this one is. I mean, you saw in the in the close up, you can you can squonk the bejesus out of this thing and it won't leak. Uh, and if you let it drain back out and you take your drag or two, I don't I don't see any problem with or I haven't had any problems with it leaking at all, which is really really solid and not terribly normal in the squonk atomizer uh, you know market. So that's really great. Really great. The other thing is price point. <clears throat> this guy comes in at eighty five bucks. I've paid a lot more for atomizers that are a lot worse than this. And recently, <laughs> so uh, the fact that it's a single coil, uh, high performing, good flavorful Addy at 85 bucks, and there's fees and shipping and stuff. I'm talking about the actual price point. Um, it's great. I love I love the price point. So I, I did have to try to come up with some cons. I do have a couple. Uh, one of them is the top cap's a little tight. So you saw in the close-ups, I just had one, uh, one O-ring on there. And the reason is, is because I found both the O-rings on there. If I let it sit overnight, it got a little snug. It got a little snug. Uh, and I'm one that I take the top cap off all the time, uh, and if it's seized up or whatever, and I can't adjust the airflow finally or whatever, it's just kind of eh. So I pull off the top O-ring, and now uh, it fits securely. You heard that little snap. It fits super securely. I've not had any problems leaking, uh, so there's that. So there's one little issue, and I can fix it because I just took off one of my O-rings. Uh, the other thing is the top. I found that some some drip tips are hair wiggly. The, the stock one isn't, and most of my other ones aren't. Uh, but I've got one that I really like. It's a little wiggly, just a little. <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, not many cons, I'm afraid. This is a really good atomizer. Um, so real quick, I do want to address something else. And one of the one of because what this is is it's another pro in this particular column. So the the other pro of this is the man behind it. So Stephen, uh, I've talked to a lot about a lot of other things, not just this, but just regular things as well. And he's just a pleasure to be around. He's he's nice, <laughs> and not just to me, to other people too. Like his other customers, it's not just me. Uh, he he's just he's positive and he's upbeat, and he cares about people and he wants to make a product that people like and that and in his words that don't that doesn't waste their time or money. Uh, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to make something good. So when when you have somebody like that running things, and that that makes me feel better. Not only just talking to it, it was nice, but also makes me feel better that he's going to be supporting the customers going forward, and that you know their their experiences uh, is is he wants it to be positive and positive and, and to be good. So it, it's no it's no great surprise, honestly, that he's friends with somebody like Dayon from Limelight Mechanics, who's a very similar sort of thing. The guy is accessible, and uh, and they've got an admin team that is going to be supporting. Um, the products going forward. That's cool. I really like that. If you watch the show, you know I've I'm not I've not always had positive uh, customer experiences before with things that even things that I didn't mind that you know kind of liked a little bit. But that having a poor customer experience to me, that the vaping market's too small and niche to deal with stuff like that. Um, 
uh, life's too short to deal with stuff like that. Uh, so when I when I'm gonna vote with my uh, you know the things that I like and that I show off to people, or and I vote with my wallet. I'm going to be voting for people that are cool people that make good things, not just people that make good things that are kind of crappy people. I'm going to go with both of those, both of those things. So when you have people like Nareg from Narmods, uh, Stephen from Haku, uh, Dayan from Limelight, Eric from Silversteam, Chato from Chatosan, um, I forget anybody, Christian from Bell, Bell Vapes. Uh, those are all the ones that come immediately to mind that are cool people that make good stuff and. I would put Stephen in that category. That, that, maybe that doesn't mean anything to you. Maybe you only care about the end product. That's fine. Uh, I just wanted to say that and and put put a little stake in the ground and say, hey, this is what I like. I like cool people. I like people that are nice to be around. Now I'm gonna vote with my wallet. That's it. Now I'm gonna vape this thing. But you don't have to sit around here and wait for me to do that. So. I will say goodbye. Thanks to you out. Peace. Wait for me to do that. So I will say goodbye. Thanks to you out. Peace. Let me knock some stuff over too.